take about 10, 12 minutes, I'm expecting, to show you the whole project. 12 to 15 minutes, something like that. Um, I do love to talk, and so I apologize. And you're not, you're not obligated to stick around. But I, I do want to explain this to them, but you're welcome to join in and hear about all the fun stuff we're working on right now. All right. Go through it again. Okay. He's awesome, isn't he? Yeah. So, I don't mind. Uh, this presentation comes all the way from Walt Disney Imagineering, our team of experts that do all the great designing for the park. Um, this area has been open since 2008, but we've never really shared with you the process that our, our Imagineers go through, and we wanted to be able to share that in, in very great detail today. So, uh, the first step, when they decided several years ago to begin this process, was is, is always research. They wanted to bring a fantasy land, a, a, a fantasy fair of sorts, uh, for our guests, because princesses have never been more popular than they are today. Uh, so they went back to the source material. They wanted to see how Disneyland and Fantasyland has been affected over the years. Uh, Many people, well, some people don't even know that Fantasyland has lived in two different phases here at Disneyland Resort. There was the fantasy that lived, uh, Fantasyland that lived from 1955 through 1982, and then a brand new Fantasyland that I'm going to date myself in saying that it opened the week I was born in 1983. It opened back in May. So this is one of the reasons I love this project, because Fantasyland was reborn in 1983 in May, and it was the same week I was born back in North Carolina. Uh, so they started doing all their research and seeing how it affected. They wanted to see how the princesses have grown to be loved by all these little youngsters, and, and young and old, young at heart, uh, throughout the years. They saw the original drawing. One of the things that they, they were surprised to see is that back in 1954, in the Herb Ryman drawings uh, that Walt had Herb, draw, or Herb Ryman draw as he was going to the banks, was that Fantasyland wasn't just behind the castle, but it reached out into the park, right in front of the castle. But during his lifetime, he never saw that come to be. At first, it was due to financing. He didn't have the money. And then, if you go all the way back to 1955 through about 1987, the only way to fall in love with those Disney characters, unless you came to one of our wonderful Disney parks, was if you, if you went to the movie theater, which every decade or so, Disney would re-release our wonderful films to the theater. Well, I grew up going to the theater, and, but then right around the time I was four years old, VHS became very popular, and all of a sudden those Disney films were flooded into my home. Now, in 2013, Disney princesses are more popular by everyone than they've ever been before, and we want to be able to bring them much closer to you. So we find that not only are our, our little ones more excited than they've ever been to meet princesses, but Walt wanted this from the very beginning, in, in, in whatever way he possibly could. So they begin the process with research. Then they move into a really neat program called the Blue Sky Phase. During the Blue Sky Phase, nothing gets thrown out. It doesn't matter whether they're writing it on a napkin or toilet paper even. Where the inspiration comes from, they keep it. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it practically will work, how big it's going to be, if it's too big, if it's too small, it doesn't matter. The idea will be kept until they start uh, trimming down. You'll start seeing a few really noticeable things. Um, in this section now, until I knew, until the uh, Imagineer showed me what he was talking about, I had no clue what that was because, well, only he did. Uh, in, in his original drawings for Fantasy Fair, there were going to be gardens that you'd meet the princesses. Well, during the hot summer months, that doesn't help our princesses any more than the Fantasy Fair currently does now. So the garden idea wasn't going to work. But it's the, it's the blue sky phase, we keep it. Also, you'll notice that there's a cave that would lead to a looming dragon. Well, that's not necessarily going to work for our princesses, but we're in the blue sky phase, we keep it. So everything's starting to come together. They know that they want to have this meet and greet. Well, that might have looked really nice during the garden phase. But, so, let's hold on to that idea and see how it evolves. So we move a little bit further into the concept idea, and they start cultivating their idea. The design really isn't a detail. They're going to take what, what's starting to work, 
and they're going to build on it. They want to make sure it works. Now, I'll, I'll point out a couple things. That during this phase, Tangled had just been released to the theaters and was a huge success. Rapunzel is a brand new princess. It's the 50th an animated feature for the Walt Disney Company. A huge success and a great film. But are we going to focus on Rapunzel forever? And we experience roughly 50 million guests a year. Is a maypole that holds roughly 8 to 10 uh, lines of, of play on it. Is that going to work for the droves of guests that we have every single day? Maybe not. So you see the design coming together. I love that um, apparently this guy kind of lives in the medieval world, and yes, not really in the medieval world at the same time. Um, but you see the design all coming together. Uh, you'll see this little guy in just a few minutes. So the design comes together. Of course, this is a Disney park. We have to have a merchandise location. We can't leave that out. Um, and, and, and we're an entertainment park. Let's put a show element in, and we have decided that they're going to use the, uh, the area that has for the last 57 years been Carnation Plaza Gardens. It already has a staging plaza, so we know that it will work. So let's see how we can work it in. So they start working on this fantasy theater. Um, so it starts to come together. Feasibility, what else do we want to do and how can we make it real? They start looking into the designs. We want to make it continuity, we want to make the continuity work very well with the fantasy land that already is to be. You might see a little bit of a, what we called this year Project Sparkle, where in Disney California Adventure, just before Cars Land opened and Buena Vista Street opened, you started to notice the colors started to pop throughout the park all over the place. But that's all we, you know, we want to improve, but not have to reconstruct throughout the park. We want to make sure that what people love in Fantasyland still stays intact. Uh, so they start the design work and start playing with the designs to make them really, truly come to life. One other uh, thing that came about during this time was our creative director was hired from a firm out in, in Europe. He, uh, Michelle, is, uh, is Dutch and, and actually comes to us by way of the Netherlands and has, has, a long, or has worked in the theme park business uh, for other theme parks, but has a background studying European architecture. And so we wanted to make sure that we were lending uh, our, the, this talent to keeping it storyteller positive, but also staying true to that European architecture at the same time. Uh, one of the things that I, I do love here is the, the Owl Newell Post. You will see it standing in uh, in Fantasy Fair uh, over where the storyteller will be will be announcing all of the things coming to be. This is a, a life-size replica, but when it when it when you finally see it in Fantasy uh, Fair in March, it'll stand about 12 feet off the ground. Uh, so so you can see the detail now as he's coming together uh, for the future. We're going to move on up here and uh, see how it's all come together in the final details. So to begin the implementation process of how should we build it. We've got the plot of land. We know where we want to build it. We're going to build it where Carnation Plaza has spent its last 57 years. Well, at Disney, we always pay tribute to the things that used to be in the area. Uh, one of those things is because Carnation Plaza Gardens was once there, at the, at the highest most point in the area, you'll find a shield that you can see right here, but it fits into this area that says CPG paying tribute to that Carnation Plaza Gardens. Another thing is you'll notice this swan weather vane. For many of you may remember the swans that used to live in the moat at uh, Sleeping Beauty Castle. They don't live there anymore, but now our, uh, our, our weather vane will and paying tribute to them. Um, I'm really excited to show you guys right over here to our final uh, piece that is the big model that they used up in, in Glendale to design all of this uh, for the final product. So right over here is our, our final project that is opening in March of this year. It's going to be opening mid to late March. We haven't released a, an official date just yet, um, but there are, oh, pardon me, there are a few things that are going to be a, a major part of the project. One of the things is that all of our, all of our royals are going to receive permanent homes. Uh, when you come in, into this northmost part of Fantasy Fair, you'll find... Uh, you'll be greeted by Aurora, 
who will who will be able to meet with all of her uh, lovely subjects, uh, and then you'll move in to meet with Cinderella and then Ariel the Little Mermaid. Uh, those will be those those young princesses will be there all day long, uh, and we'll be able to give them the royal treatment so they can spend more time with their guests. They're very excited about getting some air conditioning and uh, and being able to get a permanent location that they can decorate to their, uh, to their uh, specific desires. A few other things that will happen is that in some, um, as a result, um, Merida will be moving to where Rapunzel has spent the last few years in, in Fantasyland. Uh, Princess Tiana will be moving to a permanent home uh, over in New Orleans Square. And uh, Snow White will be finding a permanent home at the Wishing Well. Also, uh, we have two new shows that are opening over in the fantasy land or in the in the fantasy fair area. Uh, the first show is Belle and the Beast will be presenting a guest interactive show uh, about the Beauty and the Beast story, inviting the guests to participate, starring in the show. Uh, after the show is over, Belle and the Beast will come out uh, to do a meet and greet with all those that want to sign to get autographs and take pictures with them. And and just after Rapunzel will begin a show uh, with Flynn Rider. So all of you Flynn Rider fans are going to get to meet him uh, pretty often, and uh, and it'll be a guest interactive experience as well. Uh, a, a few other really neat points about the area is that right in the center is Tangled Tower. It Though it only stands four inches tall right now, in our final project, it will stand 16 feet tall. And one of my favorite aspects is that during the day, uh, Rapunzel's uh, sun, uh, sun Lily Serenade will play throughout the day. And as you're hearing it come from the ground, you'll find that the hair begins to glow. That will be a really neat effect throughout the day, but it will be spectacular at night. Um, in addition, Maurice, Belle's father, has agreed to come on board and open a food location, an outdoor food location. He's been working tirelessly to create a brand new project with some uh, foods, food and treats that will be exclusive to his location, including working with the doll company on a brand new doll whip project that he's hoping that he can have. Um, we will have a brand new, as we talked about, this is a Disney park. We need some merchandise here. And uh, so on the left, you'll have fairy tale treasures in that blue building. Uh, and in the center, you'll find that that entrance that will take you over to Frontierland, Rancho del Zocalo, and those restrooms that sometimes we do need uh, will be available. Uh, one, of, one of the nice little uh, tidbits that I want to show is that there's a small music box that you'll find that is a true toss back all the way to the medieval period. It will star Clopin from the Hunchback of Notre Dame. And as our guests wind it, you'll find a, a dancing scene using a, a true style entertainment uh, piece from the medieval period of uh, these these moving glass uh, scenes that will create an also a new scene playing topsy turvy in a music box form. Be on the lookout on the on the ledges because we have a lot of animated things happening, uh, including my friend Figaro. Uh, Geppetto's cat seems to be entertained by the cat or by the, the birds that are singing. But the birds here, they seem to have learned Disney songs. Um, so be on the lookout for Figaro getting into some trouble in the area. Because this is all moving here, it also means that Fantasyland Theater has had the opportunity to be, to be renovated. And just over here, you'll find that in June of this year, we have a brand new production show called Mickey and the Magical Math that will be opening in June, starring on my good friend Mickey Mouse um, as, a, as a young apprentice that finds a magical map, and here's the voice of Yen Sig tell that if, uh, of the powers of it, a curious Mickey paints the last little corner that hasn't ever gotten its paint job and finds himself sunk into some amazing Disney stories. This show is going gonna, is gonna to be along the same lines as what the production value of Aladdin has been, World of Color, and Fantasmic, and will be a show that you can see throughout the day, just as you can see with Aladdin every single day of the year. It's going to be a great opportunity and a new show that's coming during this hot summer months. Uh, when we get it, we're going to need some time under that canopy. Um, so that's what's coming for us in the in the next few months. We're so grateful that you came by. If you have any questions, please don't ha hesitate to ask. Thank you guys for coming by. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.